Hello friends, this is Stephanie with Skewed Imaging today and it's about time I have uh, done a how-to video on how to make these dragon egg pouch slash koozies or as I like to call them myself a beer basket. You can cinch it up, there's about a one inch diameter opening that's still present even after it's fully cinched because those cow hitches don't allow it to get much smaller of an opening there. Or you can open it up and uh, stick like a canned beverage inside there and use it as a little drink koozie. I typically do make these so that they fit just a kind of standard size or standard diameter size can. And um, if you are going to make it for a larger base uh, bottle or jar or whatever, um, you're going to have to make modifications to everything pretty much here. So. Um, this is, again, just kind of more for a standard size can or the standard diameter size. It could be like those taller energy drinks, but wait. Oh. So uh, today we're going to learn how to do it kind of in this similar pattern. I uh, have done a three color here. So the purple is the same chord. The Polaris color here is the same chord. And then we have two chords of this blue crab right here as well. So we're going to make a three color beer basket pouch for you today. So let's get into what we need to have on hand. All right, so first things first, making a paracord koozie, you're obviously going to need some paracord. Since we're doing a three color, I'm doing two uh, cords of graphite, one of this maroon red zigzag, and one of this Mojave color changing cord. Each of these I have personally cut to 19 feet a piece. I would recommend if you're starting out, um, do about 20 feet a piece because we all know it's terrible when you get to the end of a project and you're like just a little bit too short and you have to scrap the whole thing. About 80 foot of cord. Um, you also are going to need some kind of jar or bottle that you're going to be kind of using as the diameter to these pouches. Um, when I make these pouches, the inside diameter is about two and a half inches wide. So my jar is about two and five eighths. I want it just a little bit larger than the diameter that I'm aiming for uh, because I braid super tight. So when I pull this jar out, it naturally kind of wants to shrink in a little bit. So keep that in mind. My little two cents on that. Um, eventually near the end of the project, I'll use some hemostats just to kind of help tighten up the finishing knot. Um, a lighter, of course, because we need to finish off some ends. Um, this little clamp, I would say is probably optional. I use it with every one of them because it helps me to hold the center point starting out in place while I get everything kind of set up. So we're going to be using that uh, pretty quickly here to start out. Um, a cord lock button. I just get these little plastic cord lock buttons from boardparacord.com. Um, Technically, the paracord does fit through here, but it is quite a tight fit. So you're not going to have that much of a, um, you know, a button push when you are cinching and uncinching these pouches. They kind of fill in most of that spot. So um, and then a Marlin spike to help tighten up that very last knot on the pouch as well. And of course, a handy dandy pair of scissors to help us finish everything off as well. We have to first get the bottom structure made. So in the very middle of the bottom of the pouch, that's actually where we're starting. And it's kind of, I guess, a wall knot that we're putting in here first. When I am doing a three color pouch like this, the, this blue crab in this example pouch is going to be where I'm setting my graphite, my gray cords. Um, so when I'm doing it like this and I want this cross pattern, I set these two matching colors first. Um, I've found the middle points of all of my cords to kind of make it easier so you don't have to watch me tangle myself up here. And I use my little clip to just hold on to about where that middle point in the cord is going to be. And then I take that second graphite cord or that second color that you're doubling up on and I want to kind of lay it at a 
like an across or a plus sign type of pattern here. So I'm trying to line up the center points of both of those. I typically kind of hold both sides of the one that I already have in the clamp and then I kind of hold that other one pretty close to it so then that way when I take that clamp off I don't lose much of where that middle point is sitting. This uh, clip can be helpful but it can be a little bit tricky if you don't have all your cords held when you remove it it'll make things slide and you might have to reset it all. So for now I kind of have a plus sign design in there. I just pushed a little bit of the slack into that clip so that way it will kind of stay a little more perpendicular for now. And then really to me it doesn't matter which one I'm setting next. If it's this one or the Mojave cord and if we're going to go between these two gray ones or these two gray ones. It's really going to be about the same in my opinion. Um, so now that we have that kind of plus sign that's pinned there and in the clip. I'm going to lay this maroon one at a diagonal. Again, I'm kind of laying it over the top of the clip first, holding all of the, the cords below so that I can kind of secure that middle point. And I'm going to sneak that red cord right underneath there. And with the last one in the Mojave, we're going to be doing the same thing. We're just going to be going in between the other two gray cords here. So I'll pinch that over the top, hold all those cords at the bottom there, and do my best to slide that Mojave in there without too much of those middle points moving all together. So you're going to have it kind of looking like a little asterisk minus that one that you know, the clip's actually in the way. It's not going to go all the way past that, but you want it to alternate gray, uh, you know, gray, red, gray, orange, gray, red, gray, orange, if that's how you want to have it set up anyway. Of course, you can kind of align those colors how you really want. Starting out from this point with the cords all pinned at the middle points, I like to take the, uh, kind of that first cord that I laid down. So one of the gray ones, it really probably doesn't matter which one you take first, but in this example, of course, I'm going to take the gray and pull it over the top of the, the Mojave or that orange right next to it in a counterclockwise fashion. I'm going to do the same with the Mojave and go over its neighbor cord, which is the other graphite. Then I'm going to take that gray, let me try to get this a little better angle for you. Take that gray over the red. And I'm just kind of holding all of those slack cords below with my other fingers to kind of keep those out of the way. That red is going to go over the gray. That gray over the orange. This orange over this gray. And this gray is going to go over that orange, but I'm not going to necessarily do it over that clip. I probably could, but this is one reason why I kind of like to use a clip like this that has a little triangular opening here. Of course, you can use a little bit of a larger clip, but I like to just run it through the eye or through the mouth of that little clip there. Then it's going to go over that red one. And then lastly, that red cord is going to go through that gray loop that we've started out with. So each cord is going to kind of be held within its own loop. And I'm slowly kind of just pulling some of the slack out of these. Tightening them up as best as I can. And I will periodically remove the clip just to kind of get this center point a little bit tighter. 
I don't want to pull it out too early though because the knot isn't tight enough so some of that slack cord will feed back through and loose up so I like to kind of just put it in a different spot still clipping onto the center points in there but just kind of uh, the cords that are pinned through that opening of the clamp don't usually get super tight so I just kind of rotate where I have that place for the time being until I can get a nice solid knot. It's looking pretty good. I think I want to do just a little bit more. That's pretty well what that's going to look like once you have that all tightened up. The back side, you're going to have kind of that gray cross. The two colors that you laid down first are going to be kind of showing the most. I do prefer to keep this clip in here for a little bit longer though until I get the next stage done. And from this point, I start to make little slip knots. So again, I'm going to start off with this gray cord. I'm going to work in a counterclockwise fashion. So I kind of twist it so that way your slack is going to lay over the base of this here. And then I just make a little bite and put that through the back side of that loop created. So we need a little measuring tape or ruler here. And the original video shows to make these loops all the way around. So you'll have eight of those loops all the way around. I prefer to do it just a little bit different and do one knot at a time and kind of lock it down into place. Um, I, for this size, fitting like a regular size can, I measure out the length of this loop from the butt of that slip knot that we did. And I try to get that loop to be between six and six and a quarter inches long. The trick is now, don't pull on this cord or you're going to change the length here. Worst case scenario, measure, measure, measure. I did the same knot here. I'm going to measure out the length of this loop. This is going to be your core loops that make the wall of the koozie. And right about there, I have it about the six and the eighth to match the other gray one. So like I mentioned, the tutorials usually say make these loops all the way around. But now that I have two of them, I like to kind of lock them into place. So that way, if I do accidentally pull on one of these cords, I'm not going to like ruin everything and feel like I have to start over. So now that I have two of these done, that uh, left one here, we're going to make the same kind of slip knot, same exact thing. Like once you get these knots down, that's pretty much all you're making. So we're going over the top like this and then a little bit of that slack or that bite is going to come through the back side of that loop there. And I do push these. I kind of uh, push and twist and try to get that knot very close to the other one that we've made here just get it really butted up there. Now that we have that loop on this side here, that's where you're going to actually put that gray loop through. So that way that red goes right around the gray there and you just cinch that up there. I still don't want to pull on that slack gray cord because it will change the the length of that core loop there, but I just want to kind of firmly hold both sides 
push that red one down there a little bit, tighten it up, kind of lock that into place. Now that red cord on the slack side there, we're not going to use that for a while. And really, I just continue that same thing. That gray loop is done for the moment. And we're going to make the second gray cord here. Still into that slip knot fashion. Tuck that bite through the back. And I'm kind of doing a, a pushing, twisting, and pulling type of method here to tighten up that knot and get it butted up to the base of that wall knot we created. Again, now that I've got two loops here, I'm going to take that gray one that we just, the slack cord that we just finished off with, and going to make another slip knot this way. Again, get that real tight. And then this gray loop is what's going to be looping around this red one. So really this whole pouch is just a large series of slip knot after slip knot. And you're alternating if that slip knot is going to loop around its neighboring color or if it's going to loop around its own color. Because if you kind of notice on this, this is like the purple core loop and you have purple and its neighboring blue crab that alternate around that center loop. So we're just getting all of those slip knots set into place so we can take that clamp out of there and start working on the actual base a little bit more. So far, we have the knots for halfway around the koozie at this point. We have one, two, three, and four loops here. We've got four more to make on the bottom and cast them onto the opposite uh, core loops for those little slip knots. So I'm going to speed this up, do a little time lapse on this re the rest of this. I finished up the other four loops. Um, I did remove the clamp. Once I uh, usually can do about five of the loops, sometimes six before I take the clamp out. Um, but by putting in these slip knots over those loops as I go, that allows me to kind of have everything a little bit more secure. So when I take the clamp out, I'm not kind of changing the integrity or the uh, lengths that I have set ahead of time. Um, once I get them all done, I also kind of like to hold on to all of those scrap cords just below the actual knot and it almost feels like a little bouquet of flowers, <laughs> but I just kind of comb my fingers through all of those the slack cord and reorganize that again because it gets to be very um, messy if I don't. We're doing the same process all the way around. So we've already you know, maybe where like this red one is, the first slip knot cast it onto the gray. But now where that red cord is coming out between the red and the gray there, that slip knot, once we make one with the slack cord, it's gonna latch onto the gray, uh, to the red one here. So it's gonna just alternate. This red cord is gonna alternate between which core loops it is casting onto. Same with the gray one. So the gray cast it over here on Mojave. It's gonna come back over to the gray and it's gonna alternate back and forth on those. So it'll be the same type of pattern. But uh, when we get all of those, you know, cords kind of set into place, we're just still making those slip knots. I'm going over that uh, 
that cord from where it comes out there. The bite again still comes around from the back. Tightening up that slip knot as tight and as close to the base of those knots as we can. And this time it's going to go around its like color over the red one. Now we're going to cinch that up. It is going to naturally kind of want to pull your core loop certain directions. So I kind of just like to give that a tight pull. And I'm just going to be setting all of these uh, slip knots in a counterclockwise fashion around its own like color. Now we have our second row of knots there. You can kind of see how it's starting to, to alternate. We created the first knot here with this hobby. We cast it on and locked it into place with that gray. And then we're casting on again with the Mojave. So when we look at continuing that pattern, it's going to be the same kind of thing. Making more slip knots going over like that with the bite through it. And this gray is going to cast on to the Mojave. And we're going to work in a clockwise fashion. So you're kind of alternating which directions you're going. Or you don't have to, but I feel like that's my natural process. Of course, you can work the same direction, but it can get a little bit confusing. Or you almost feel like you drop a drop a knot or skip a, you know, skip a knot in there if you don't kind of pay attention or what have you. So yeah, I'll go ahead and uh, speed this up a little bit more and we'll come back to the point where we're creating the curves of the base. I've got pretty much my whole base done here. I usually have around five or six rounds of knots to go around just to be at this point here. Um, then I grab my jar, just kind of check, make sure, do I have just a little bit of space, you know, around the, uh, I don't want it to fit exactly the base of it. I want it just a little bit wider around there because we're going to start to kind of stretch and pull these knots a little bit more upward and I do this quite a bit but like with every single knot for the next few rounds probably four or five rounds maybe three four but I want to kind of keep the, ba the base flat but I want to start training these knots or these loops excuse me to start to kind of go upward a little bit more here. And I even get kind of a little bit aggressive too. Sometimes I actually hold the, the whole base of it and I pull it down toward the opposite side. That way I can kind of hold on to the knots. It'll curve up in my hand, but I'm just trying to get a little bit of the slightest angle in there. And really, we just keep making more of these rounds of knots. But as I'm making them for this curve, I'm still tightening them up, but I'm also kind of twisting the knot inward as I'm tightening around that knot. It is going to pull that core to the side but I'm just going to push that, that little uh, slip knot down around that and still just keep trying to create a little bit of a bend there.
Again, we're going to kind of pull the slip knot inward toward the center of the pouch, trying to just train that curve. So that's just one round with training those knots a little bit. You can maybe kind of see that there's a little bit of a curve there. Obviously we need more, so we're just going to keep doing that same slip knot pattern all the way around. Keep pulling these knots in a little bit here. After probably another round or two, I would guess, these knots will start to kind of lay more stacked on each other and we'll create those walls there. So again, I'll speed this up a little bit. I've got just enough knots to be able to securely fit this around the base of the jar. It's a pretty good snug fit. I did kind of make it a little bit uh, tighter in those last couple rows there, but I think that that is really what keeps it connected to the jar at the moment. Um, so really, this is where it's all just kind of cake and smooth sailing from here. All of my ends have you know those slack cords i've got those loops on each um all eight of those loops there and i'm just going to be making slip knots the rest of the way up until we get closer to the top of these loops um, what i do like to do between each row of knots though is i like to kind of hold on to the loops um you know like the red ones on both sides and i kind of like to just pull that up and cinch that up toward the top of the jar. That way it keeps everything a little bit more uniform, keeps it tighter, and it just encourages the shape of that bottle to just keep going like that. So make sure you t pull up on those loops and tighten those up. But from here, I just keep that jar in there and I'm going to just continue making the same slip knots that we always have. Just with the jar in there so that way I can't make them any tighter than the jar. And that way it won't cinch up on me too much when I go to remove it. like this. So this is the last knot on this round here because this, you can kind of tell because the cords, you know, are going to go, all these slack cords are going this way now counterclockwise when before they were going clockwise. But we're coming up to that last knot and that last core's kind of been pulled the other direction. But you can kind of push that down a little bit if you want. But once you cast on that last knot there, it's going to help to pull it back the other way, but still pushing it down helps keep it in place. And then I'm going to pull on those loops, try to make sure that my fingers are pretty well equal on both sides and pull that to encourage those tight high walls there. That's most of it for now. I'm just going to do a pretty long time lapse here so we can get to closer to the top of this pouch and we'll see you again soon. Here we are. We've got to the top of the wall here when I have about one and an eighth or one and a quarter inch or so left of the core loops that we started with there. That's where I kind of finish off the walls of the koozie. 
Sometimes I have a little bit less, like one inch I feel like is pretty small to finish off with, but one and an eighth to one and a quarter there. Um, you can go ahead and like do the drawstring cinch and finish it off at this point, but I personally have done enough of these that I have plenty of notes on all the measurements and things like that, so I feel confident that I can just finish off these walls first and then I'll take it off this jar and finish up with the, the drawstring. So to finish off these little um, slip knots, we don't want to like leave them there or just cut them and burn them right there because if that comes out, you're going to be kind of missing a loop there. So I just kind of, uh, where the slack comes out there, just make a small overhand knot. So just pull the, the tip of it through there like that. And I kind of just turn it because it's easier for me to hand, handle, but I kind of just pull that loop so it's super tight. And then I pull that slack through there. Same thing all the way around. Make a little loop there. Bring that end through that loop and then tighten up that overhand. After we get those all tied in there, I just cut off that excess there. And honestly, I could probably just take this off because I don't really need that anymore. And I can get a little bit closer and handle the pouch a little better this way. I cut about, I get maybe like an eighth, might be a little bit close, maybe around a, between a quarter and an eighth close with my scissors and then singe melt, burn, whatever you want to call it, the excess of the rope off there. And use like a smoothing tool or like I have a pair of scissors to just make sure that that gets a little smoothed out. So there we have little overhand knots at the end of our wall all the way around with our little loops at the top. It does have a little bit of a roundness to the bottom there since I haven't had it off the jar for too long. We'll just kind of push that in there and form it a little bit more as a koozie there. So. I'm going to do just a gray uh, for the drawstring. You can always do obviously one of your other colors here to make it pop a little bit. But like I said, I have a foot and a half here. I would go two foot though. You'll probably see why, but if you're familiar with doing this and you like to have as less, uh, like as least scrap as possible, you can try a foot and a half as well. But you want to get your handy dandy little cord lock here that we need for that cinch. You can also do like a ranger bead. So if you wanted to like do it all without any plastic or any hardware, um, just YouTube uh, how to make a ranger bead and you can make that around the paracord for the drawstring. But we slide that in one side. Uh, my trick for getting that paracord through there is I try to kind of cut it off at an angle and then kind of burn and roll it to a point as much as I can without hurting my 
myself or burning my fingers or whatever. And I just kind of uh, pull it most of the way down the length of that cord. And I figure out where I want to place it. So the cord lock is going to sit between two of those different loops that we have here at the top. And I think I do like it between the gray and the Mojave. I'm going to do through the gray side first. So to create the little cowl hitches at the top of the pouch, you're really just holding those loops down. You can kind of put a little bit of a twist into it as you go. So that way it's the cord's not like weird and stuff. If you put a little twist in there, it might behave a little bit better. But once you have those that loop folded down, you're going to take your end with the cord lock on it and you're going to go down through the right side of that cow hitch and around the back up the left side. And when that gets pulled tight and everything, it'll turn into like a full cow hitch there. And I just do that all the way around, kind of twist and fold down on that loop. Down through the right, around and up through the back on the left. And then once you get to the end with all of those cow hitches, you're going to run that cord through the other side of your cord lock button. At the end here, I just make a simple um, foot rope, a single foot rope knot. You can do a diamond or whatever you really want. And that's probably another reason why I sh start out with two foot on the um, drawstring because I do a single foot rope knot and there's just enough for me to be able to do that. But probably not if you're going to do a diamond knot instead. So with a single foot rope, we have the two cords here. We take that right one over the left. That left one is going to come over the top and down through the center there. So just a basic kind of loop like that. And I might even cinch this up a little bit more to get just a little bit more cord to make this knot here. Your right strand is going to kind of fold and stay behind those two front pieces that we just made here. Stay back there. And then the left one is going to kind of go around that and stay in the front. But it'll also tuck into that side over there. So with this little cord as I have, it might be pretty tricky to kind of see what is going on here. If you have any trouble making this individually, just look up single foot rope knot on YouTube. And then we take those ends that are sticking out. We want to run them right through the top of this knot here in between these two cords. So with this one being in the back, I'm going to run my hemostat through the back side of this here and pull that cord up through the middle. Same with the front one. It already wants to kind of go in that direction. We're just going to get it right underneath this cord here in the front. It's not too difficult, but I feel like it looks intimidating right now. 
with very little uh, slack to be working with here. It's really your option if you would like to, you know, leave some little tassel ends like this. I typically don't. I cut it off about maybe a quarter inch close to that, somewhere in there. And we just cinch that. That's a uh, dragon egg pouch slash beer basket koozie. And I hope that that has helped and hasn't been too entirely confusing for you. <laughs> so feel free if you are um, connected with me on any of my socials or in any of my uh, like paracord groups or communities, uh, feel free to reach out personally if you need a little extra guidance there or heaven forbid if I forgot anything else to overwhelm you with. <laughs> but uh, there we have it. Finally a tutorial on how to make these little drink koozies. So hit that subscribe button if you feel that this has been helpful and uh, let me know what else you'd like to see from me. If you want to know where I get my cord or where I've got my glass jar or for spacing, which that probably doesn't matter too much to you. But if you want to know any of those things or get some paracord at 20% off, uh, just check that description in the video. And I appreciate you all for watching. Take care.